Hi everybody, good morning. Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L Tutoring. This video I'm going to be going over some very common questions that a lot of patients have that may stump kind of the new dental hygienist or the new dental assistant. So this is a great sort of learning experience, even a good review if you've been working for a while. Because let me tell you, I've handled some very difficult questions before, um, all the while maintaining my professionalism, but being nice at the same time, being firm and yeah, you're probably wondering what kind of questions I'll be talking about. So the first one is, and this may or may not apply to you, but um, especially when you start to work in an office and if you're considered new, you will get some patients say to you, oh, you're new, I've never seen you before. Um, if you look young, they may say to you, you look really young. Um, I kind of want to see the other girl. Maybe I'm going to rebook my appointment because I didn't know I was going to be seeing a new hygienist today or a new assistant today or, you know, who knows. This happens to me. Um, even I've been in the same office for 13 years. And if I, if I had never seen that patient before, it does happen because we have several hygienists working in that office. Um, I kind of get the, who are you? Um, once I tell them, well, I've been a hygienist here for 13 years, they look at me like, really? And it's like, well, I'm not lying. Um, I don't say that to them, of course, but I'll say something along the lines of, well, I've been a hygienist here for 13 years. I may not have seen you because I used to work on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, I worked on the other side of the room. So if you're always on this side of the room, then maybe that's why I hadn't have seen you. I'll even throw in, well, you know what? You look really familiar. So maybe I have seen you before and you just don't remember. But if you're at a new office, you can't exactly say that, right? Especially if you're a new dental assistant or a new dental hygienist with no experience. You can't exactly say, well, I have plenty of experience. Um, too bad, so sad that I haven't seen you before. Let's move along. I don't have time. You know, you can't say that. So if you're a new um, dental hygienist or dental assistant, what you can say is, oh, okay, well, you know what? Um, I would love to continue seeing you um, since you're, you're here now. Um, I'm, my name is Andrea. Um, if you have any questions at any time, please just let me know. I am more than welcome to stop at any time if you need me to. But since you're here now, um, I would be more than happy to clean your teeth um, to make sure that you have nice and shiny teeth. Um, and you look very familiar. Are you sure I haven't seen you before? You know, just be as nice as possible. Kill them with kindness. They could have just been having a rough day where they're looking to take it out on anybody, especially if you look young. They will try to put you down in the sense where it's kind of like, they might say to you, well, you look really young. Are you sure you're qualified for this or something? I've heard all kinds of things, but the best thing to do in that situation is to just kill them with kindness. Let them know that you would like to still treat them, but if they change their mind or they want to rebook for another day, that is absolutely fine. But since they're here now, you might as you might as well see them. Um, if they hate it, they don't have to book with you again. You can laugh it off and say something like that. But I find, you know, try to avoid having them go up to the front desk mad um, and saying that they didn't know that they would be seeing you today and they want to rebook for another time. So try to avoid that if you can. There are some patients out there that it doesn't matter what you say they will still say, well, I want to see the other girl. I didn't know that I was seeing you today. So it's nothing personal, but I want to rebook my appointment. That may happen and that's okay, but just try to avoid that if you can. Um, another common question or statement, which it doesn't matter if you've been working for two months or, or um, 10 years, is it's time for them to have their checkup x-rays done and they don't want them. Um, you need to always listen to them and let them know that that is their right to not have them done. But you also need to say that, you know, that's no problem. I do understand, but we would not be asking for them if we didn't need them. Um, you had five cavities last time. Um, Dr. So-and-so just wants to make sure that they 
are well taken care of and that you don't have more cavities because it's not exactly common to have five cavities at one appointment so your cavity rate is higher which means that we should be taking the x-rays a little more often until we get that under control because cavities can start in between the teeth and if they spread we can't see them because we can't see in between the teeth in the mouth um, so try to relate it to the patient as much as possible. Um, if they don't have a high cavity rate, then what I say is, okay, you know, you don't want the um, x-rays today. I do understand that. Um, how about I have a look inside the mouth first? Um, Dr. So-and-so is coming in to do your checkup after the cleaning. If he or, see, um, he or she sees something that they are concerned about, then how about we take the x-ray? at that time but I am okay to hold off on the x-rays for now since you haven't had a cavity for a year or two um, but legally we have to take them every three years um, because we don't want to miss something serious that could be happening we took them a year ago so how about we wait unless we see something that we need to take the x-ray for so does that make sense so it does depend on the client case it does depend on if they have a high decay rate or not um, when you're taking x-rays on children you always need to ask the parents permission if if they say to you well I prefer to not take any x-rays today for my child you know it's the same thing I tell them that that's fine they are fully capable it is their right to make that decision but but let them know that they may have a, a high cavity rate. Um, children especially, it's very easy to get cavities because their teeth aren't fully de uh, developed, the primary teeth. They tend to eat more, you know, sugar, candy, sweets. They tend to not brush as properly because they just don't know how, and it's a lot harder. So, um, so to get cavities is a lot easier and you don't want to put a child through a filling having to get the needle if that's not necessary. So in some cases, if you take the x-ray sooner rather than later, you can catch a very early cavity known as an incipient. And then if you sort of tell the child and the parent to focus the brushing on that area by their next appointment they may not have that incipient cavity so you could say something like that and say well we actually want to catch them before they have to be fixed because no child wants a needle no child wants to have to go through a filling appointment right having to put the rubber dam on all kinds of things no child wants that but if the parent still says no, that's fine. It is up to them. Um, another common thing is if you're having trouble taking x-rays on a child, you know what? Suck it up and just say, okay, the x-rays are not working. We will do it next time. Now, people may not agree with me on this, but I am full on making the dental experience a good one for the child. If they're crying, screaming, and I say to them, okay, we have to take this x-ray, that's not having a good experience for them. If we need the, the um, x-ray, that's another thing, but then you know what? Send them to a child specialist. You shouldn't have to be the bad person, but that's just my opinion. You don't have to have that opinion, but to me, if a child is kicking and screaming and don't want the x-ray done, I say, okay, we will do it another time. Um, if you're trying the, the um, x-ray and it's just hard for them, Use this, the uh, smallest film possible and, and try to make it exciting. You know, say, okay, you know, open. I'm putting in this little teeny weeny thing. I will show you your pictures afterwards. You can pick two toys, you know, do whatever you can. But if the patient's like kicking, screaming, crying, you can't really reason with a child when they're crying. So I tend to say, okay. We don't have to take the x-rays, but that means you're not gonna get a toy today because this was part of the whole thing. I'll give you a toothbrush and toothpaste, but the next time, if we can take your picture, you can have a toy. So I sort of bribe them a little bit, but again, if it's too hard for you, don't take the x-ray because that's not easy for you, it's not easy for the parents, it's not easy for them, but that's just my opinion. Like this whole video is based on my opinions and on how I answer questions. 
I find those kind of the most common. Um, I had a patient actually the other day where she, um, I was polishing her teeth and she was really sore. And she kind of said to me like, okay, wait, this was her. She said, okay, hold on, hold on. Um, my teeth are really sore. Like it's heating up my tooth. I've never had this ever. So she was implying that I was new and didn't know what I was doing. So I kind of said to her, oh, okay, well, I can apply less pressure if you like. And then she says, yeah, I think you're, you're applying too much. You know, again, implying I don't know what I'm doing. And I said to her, which maybe I shouldn't have, but I did say to her, well, I do have 13 years experience and I've never had a patient um, tell me that I was applying too much pressure. But for you, um, I'll apply less. I might not be able to shine the teeth up as nicely because I'm not applying any pressure, but you know, every, everybody's teeth are a little bit more sensitive. So I kind of was rude, but firm, but then nice, right? And she was just, she was one of those annoying patients, I'll be honest with you. So then she says, well, you can apply pressure, but I've never had it hurt. And I said to her, well, if I apply the pressure, that's when you're sore. So I don't want to make you sore because that wouldn't be very nice of me. And then she says again, so like this was like a back and forth thing. And then she says, well, do what you have to do, but I've never been sore ever. So that's all she just kept on saying. So I applied such light pressure, it was ridiculous. I was taking off nothing. But I said, but I, I kept on saying to her, so how does this feel? Is that okay for you? And then she said, oh yeah, like that's perfectly fine. Like you were just obviously applying too much pressure. So, you know, so I just continued on, you know, slowly. I took off nothing, but anyways, that's what she wanted. And then afterwards, I, um, I always say to my patients, do you have any questions, um, any concerns? Um, how was your appointment today? And she said, oh, okay, yeah, awesome. So who knows? But, you know, every patient will be a little bit different. Some of them may be difficult, but just kill them with kindness. Try to figure out why they're being difficult because sometimes they're just nervous. And that's how they, um, I guess, show their fear is by being rude and not being very nice and just making no sense. Um, because again, I've never heard of a polish hurting somebody, so she was making no sense, but I wasn't going to tell that to her, right? Because you, you, you still have to be a professional, but it was annoying. So I kind of was a little bit rude, but I was still nice. So it's the typical sandwich technique where you're rude and then nice and then, you know, so on. So just some difficult things sometimes, but you have to always handle it in a certain way. Um, I could talk about things like this forever. So how about I save some more questions for another video? And if you guys have any questions, please comment in the video below. And if you've experienced a difficult patient or a difficult situation, let me know. And then I can do another video about how I would handle it. And then we can kind of have a whole laugh about it together, right? So I hope this helped. Let me know if you need anything and I'll see you guys in the next video.